Here we go. This was my favorite one. I, I love this song. One. My failures I try to hide It was mine Till I met You called my name Then I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness My name is JC, I'm one of the pastors here at North Point, and this is our time for communion. And we do this every week uh, when we get together for communion to share a meal, to do this in remembrance of Jesus because he asked us to do this whenever we get together. Even though we're get to, getting together virtually and not physically at this point, or at least some of us may be getting together physically, we can still do this as a body of Christ, as um, a body of believers in love, and, uh, well, I thank you for joining us today, 
and I just want to read a little excerpt from Romans 12, starting at verse 9, where Paul is talking to Christians everywhere at every time. He says, Love must be without hypocrisy. Detest what is evil. Cling to what is good. Show family affection to one another with brotherly love, and outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lack diligence, but be fervent in the Spirit and serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, and serve the Lord. Share with the saints in their needs and pursue hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be in agreement with one another. Do not be proud. Instead, associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Try to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes. If possible, on your part, live at peace with everyone. Friends, do not avenge yourselves. Instead, leave room for his wrath. For it is written, vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. So do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. Friends, we can only do this because Jesus has loved us before we even knew what love was. He promised us life everlasting with him. All we need to do is trust. And sometimes it's hard to trust in this world, especially with all the things going on. Um, But he has given us patience. He has given us honor. He has given us diligence and perseverance. And he's given us right from the very beginning of the time that we started to trust him. The only reason, once again, that we can do this is because he loved us first so that we can love others and show godly love what true godly love really is. So in this time of communion, friends, let us get together and remember those things that Jesus has done for us. Yes, he has given us everlasting life, which should be enough, but he's given us so much more. He has not only uh, dragged us out of hell, but he has given us a room in his own house in heaven. And that's the only reason that we can do the things that we do, because we know we have hope for what is in the future. Well, we love you, and uh, let's hold communion together after we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all you've done for us, for giving us your only son to die at the hands of others in a horrible, horrible way so that we could have life everlasting with you. You've given us so much in our lives and we could never repay the things you've done for us. But I pray, Lord, that uh, our hearts and our minds as one body in Christ can be together and do all these things that you ask of us in your spirit. Amen. So lay down your heart.
come sit at the table, come taste the grace. There's rest for the weary, a rest that endure. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can cure. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Sim, I, yep, yep. I know I'm on announcements this week. I was, I was just about to record them, so I'll get right on that. Um, looking forward to uh, hearing your message uh, very soon. So we'll see you then. All right, bye. Man, you could send a man to the moon, but <laughs> could, could we make a phone that fits in your pocket? I guess not. I don't know what's. Hey, well, hello, North Point family. Uh, my name is Doug Rundle, and it is time for our announcements this week. Glad to have you here with services. Um, I don't know if you realize it, but um, it's June 14th, and this just happens to be our 14th week away from being at, at North Point. And man, it's been way too long, hasn't it? Um, the good news is that uh, we can finally stop counting up the number of weeks that we've been away and start counting down to when we're going to all be back together again. So looking forward to that. Um, if you haven't seen on our website or uh, messages that Tim's been sending out, we do now have a reopening plan. The staff and leadership have hammered this out and we do have a plan. Uh, again, we can be counting down now. It's only nine weeks away. Uh, we're going to be very safe, very uh, cautious with this. And of course, plans may change. Um, but right now we're, we're looking at August 16th to all be back together again. Can't wait. Um, for the announcements today, uh, since we've been doing the online messages, uh, we've been giving you a lot of links, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of places on the website and other places that, that you can go on the web to, uh, to access information about the church and activities and giving and all of that. Um, but now we've simplified things. Instead of giving you all these, <laughs> all this, you know, big long lists of different links to go to, we have now one link to rule them all. One link. Um, and that's simply northpointchurch.org slash links. Um, I'm going to go there right now and kind of kind of show you around. Um, here it is on my way too big phone. Um, but you can go to it on your phone, on your laptop, desktop, um, on a tablet, whatever that is. I'm not, not sure what that is. But 
um, you can go there to northpointchurch.org slash links. I just want to very quickly just show you everything that's accessible here, all the all the different uh, places you can go, all the different areas that you can access uh, through this. So hopefully you can see that, um, northpointchurch.org slash links. Um, and we can scroll through there and we've kind of organized them by, by groupings. Um, here's all of our services link. Um, obviously there's the reopening plan. So you can check that out just week by week, month by month. Uh, see what's going on with the reopening plan. Uh, we have our Sunday live service link. So whether you um, are attending um, at 9 or 1045, just go here, click that link. It'll take you right to the most recent live service that's happening. Um, right below that, details for this weekend. That'll um, also get you to the live service. It'll get you to the pre-recorded service. It'll get you to the kids service. Um, just tell you everything that's going on uh, this weekend. So all the links are there. Um, the most recent service, if you weren't able to join us for one of the live ones, you can click there and just go to the pre-recorded service. Um, right, below that, right below that, sermon notes. Um, if you uh, don't like doing a lot of writing during the, the sermon, you can go there. All the notes are there for you that you need. Um, finally, our, our YouTube channel. We have a YouTube channel where all the past sermons can be found. So you can click there, go there uh, for the kids and youth. Uh, the most recent kids video, which I don't know if you've been watching about. I have. I, I look forward to it each and every week. It's just an amazing video uh, that Miss Sarah and Mr. Jonathan put together for the kids. Um, so you can go there, uh, click on this link to take you right to that. You don't have to remember all the all the the very complicated uh, link um, information. Just come here, click there, go to the most recent kids video. Um, and if you want to see any of the past ones, again, there's the kids YouTube channel. So connecting and support. Uh, we love for you to connect with us. We're here to support you. Um, if you uh, uh, can do that for us, let us know if you have any prayer requests. Um, fill out the connection card for us each and every week. We'd love to know who's 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 watching, um, who's there with us worshiping. Um, next, our life groups. Uh, we talked, talked a lot about the life groups. So you can see what's going on with the life groups, which groups are still meeting through the summer, uh, which groups are in your area that you can join. Um, also, the Giving Point Food Pantry, you want to go directly to their Facebook page. And lastly, but of course not leastly, um, is our, our giving links, um, primarily giving to North Point Church. Um, just because the church is closed, obviously, all the expenses don't just go away. So... Click there. We appreciate your support. That'll take you to our, our giving page, um, npcgive.org. So we just so appreciate everyone's support, especially uh, during this time. Um, but yes, we, we continue to support our staff. Uh, we continue to support missions and missionaries and uh, ministries um, all around the world. So again, those expenses don't just stop <laughs> uh, because the world's kind of stopped now. Um, so we do appreciate your, your support, your generosity. And lastly, we've talked about the Buy a Brick campaign in the past. If you want to continue supporting that, um, you can go uh, right there and support that. So with that, um, go to the one link that rules them all, northpointchurch.org slash links, and you'll find everything that you need there. If there's anything that isn't there, hey, let us know, and we'll add it to that page for you as to, just to make it easy for you to get to where you want to go. Uh, with that, again, like I told Tim, so looking forward to uh, his message today. Um, have a great day. We love you guys. We miss you. We look forward to meeting again with you very soon. Um, enjoy the rest of service. Hey, you want some advice? Your inbox is way more important than what you're reading there. It can wait. You've got more important things to do. <laughs> All right, well, I am glad you guys are joining us online today. My name is Tim Bycroft, and I am the lead pastor here at North Point Church. And uh, just a couple of things to celebrate or to let you guys know what's going on around here. We've got some people who are meeting in their homes watching this right now. Yeah, we've got uh, what, what we're calling like house churches, if you will. So 
people who are from our area, from our community, are gathering together in their homes to watch these services. They're worshiping together. They're taking communion together. They're praying together. They're just fellowshipping with one another. They're, they're worshiping God together. And that's really exciting stuff. They're just throwing little house parties and worshiping God through it. So we, we just want to celebrate you guys. If you're joining us online um, from your house or wherever, check in with us. Let us know where you're watching from because it's been great to see how many lives are being impacted, how many people are watching uh, literally around the world. So check in with us uh, in, the, in the comments below. Uh, even if you're on YouTube, let us know where you're checking in and subscribe to us if you will. So I'm excited. Uh, some of you know this. We've been putting the information out on some of our weekly updates, uh, but we're going to be gathering together once again, large gatherings here at North Point Church on August 16th. I am so looking forward to this because it's going to be a tremendous, tremendous celebration service. Uh, we're going to—we're just going to do a lot of uh, musical worship. I'm—I'm um, I'm hoping that some of you guys will take the uh, the plunge and get baptized in Jesus Christ. That would be amazing. Uh, we're going to celebrate what God has been doing, even in the midst of all this COVID-19. So, uh, get that on your calendars. Uh, August 16th, we're going to have a huge one service all together, nine o'clock in the morning. I think it's going to be fantastic. Look forward to you guys being here with us. Um, we've been in this series um, entitled Bad Advice. We took a little break last week to talk about an issue um, that's really been affecting all of us to some degree or another around this idea of, of the, the title was Cops, Racism, and Our Response. And if you missed that, I, I would really encourage you to go back and watch that from last week and catch that again on our YouTube channel and subscribe there. But uh, um, today I want to talk about being dissatisfied. And if there's anything I know, if you want to get dissatisfied, um, just come to North Point Church. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Matt, don't, all right. Uh, no, I'm just, but, but the truth of the matter is if you are part of North Point Church, you know that there's a lot of broken people here. We're all broken, just trying to work our salvation out through Jesus Christ. Um, and so I hope there's no dissatisfaction in that. Uh, but I do pray that we find our satisfaction in Jesus Christ. So with that being said, um, let me ask you a question. I'm gonna start off with a question today. And I really would like you to write the your, your response in the comments. How many of you love to spend money? I mean, just how many love to spend money? I, I love to spend money. Come on, be honest. It's fun to spend money, okay? Um, I, I love to spend money. I, I love to buy things, not only just for myself, but man, there's great joy, right? It's great fun to buy something for someone else that you know that they want, they desire, and to, to give them that gift. It's fun to spend money. That's fun, right? And so uh, in the comments below, just, just let me know. And this, how many would say that if you had just a little bit more money to spend, that would be a blast. Um, because it would bring maybe some relief, maybe make life a little easier, um, or perhaps better, okay? And so comment below. Come on, be honest. If I gave you, I don't know, pick a number, $10,000. Let's, let's, okay, that's, that's child's play. If I gave you $100,000, okay, would that make your life better? Wouldn't you love to do that? So um, when you're, as you're writing those comments in there, some years back, um, my family, when we get together for Christmas, I love the Christmas holidays, the Christmas seasons, and I get to go back to my mom and dad's house and visit with my sisters and my nieces and nephews and all the people who are there. And, and it's always great fun. Um, but Christmas time has taken a little turn as my parents have gotten a little older, we, we as the kids have gotten a little older and the grandkids are getting older, instead of my mom and dad going out and buying all kinds of gifts for everybody, although my dad still does love to buy like crazy stuff. He'll, he'll buy us, you know, little big glasses with a big nose and mustache and all those things. We've got to take a picture with that or a crazy hat or whatever. Anyway, my dad still loves to do those kind of things uh, just to get a family photo. Um, but years ago, they started giving us this little envelope. It's a currency size envelope. Oh yeah. 
okay? So instead of a gift, they were giving us money. And so I don't know who started this. I just remember um, uh, that we have a new tradition with that. And it, it went something like this. We would all get our little currency. Dad would go out and hand out our, our little envelope with, with some money in it. And we would all be satisfied. We, and it may have been 50 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever the case may be. But we would all be tremendously satisfied and tickled that mom and dad cared enough to give us that gift. Um, but I remember, and it had to be probably one of my rotten older sisters who started this tradition, much older sisters. Um, but we all opened our envelopes, we looked inside, and one of my sisters goes, oh, thank you so much for the money and the tickets to the Bahama cruise. And I'm looking in mine going, I got no tickets to the Bahama cruise. I got, I got some currency in here, which is great but I got no Bahama cruise, all right? And, and, I, and it took me a second, okay? It took me a second to kind of figure this out. I, I just remember when she said that, and I'm looking in my envelope, there was just like this gut feeling, because I didn't catch on right away that she was just messing with me and messing with my other sister, that I was devastated, okay? And, and, and just like, boom, I went from satisfied to dissatisfied with my gift. I mean, like that, okay? So my much older sister was messing around um, with the rest of us. But every year, it's kind of become a competition who can come up with the best what's in the envelope this year bit, okay? So the reason I say that is we all know that if we had just a little bit more, we'd probably be more satisfied, wouldn't we? Um, but let me start with a scripture today. And the scripture is found in 1 Timothy chapter 6, starting in verse 8. And it says this, godliness with contentment is great gain. For we, we, we brought nothing into this world, right? When you came into this world, it was just you, your skin, okay? Um, when you came into this world, we had nothing and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and if we have clothing, we will be content with that. Now, let that draw, I mean, think about that for just a second. Let's be honest. How many of you this week, how many of you have clothes on right now? You have clothes on. Some of you on, uh, online, you may not. Dude, you're going to church with your underwear on. That's, that's great, as long as you're online. When, you come, when we get back in the building, put some, yeah, put some clothes on, okay? Don't come to church in your underwear. However, I'm going to guess that the vast majority of us that are watching online right now particularly if you're here in the United States, you would say, I've got food, I've eaten this week, I've got clothes on, okay? But let's just be honest. Most people, those basic necessities, at least where we live, are taken care of. However, I'm going to suggest that food and clothing, maybe even shelter, when we talk with people, if that is all they had, most people know that we know probably wouldn't be content with that. Why? I believe this, is that many of us have bought in to some pretty bad advice. If we only had just a little bit more, okay, then we would be happy. And some of you are going to push back and say, nope, not me, not, not, not I. I, I'm content, I'm happy with wherever God has me, okay? Um, no, nope, I, I, for example, for example, let me, let, me, let me push back on you and test this for just a second. Let me ask you this, a follow-up question. Not if I gave you a certain amount of money, but let me ask the, this way. How much money do you think you need to be happy? I mean, it's really an interesting question, and it's been asked by many different pullers and, and, and people uh, to say, how much money does the average person need in the U.S. to be happy, okay? Um, and it depends on where you live, the cost of living, and all those things, but how much money does it take for an individual to be happy, okay, to be satisfied? And the answer generally is this just a little bit more, just, just a little bit more than you have right now, at least more than you currently have. 
<clears throat> now, that's financially. But I'm going to give you a little pushback on that because satisfaction, yes, we can look at that in dollars and cents and go, wow, that, yes, I, I, I understand. A little bit more money would make my life a little easier. It would be more fun, whatever the case may be. But I think satisfaction with life has a lot of different areas, right? <clears throat> it's not just a financial dissatisfaction that many people have. It could be, um, <clears throat> I want to lose 20 pounds, right? If I, could just, if I could just lose this 20 pounds, I would feel better. I'm in that state right now. I'm trying to lose some weight, and, and, and I get it. I, wanna, I, I know that I would feel better if I could just lose that weight. Some of you might be on the other end. Man, if I could just put on a little weight, okay? I know people out there that they struggle with that as well, okay? If I could just, you're dissatisfied with your job, so you're just like, if I could just find that other job, if I could just get that job with the health insurance or the better benefits or the higher pay or whatever, then you would say, wow, my life would just be complete. I would find satisfaction in that. Some people are like, wow, if I could just get married, okay? And you're just like, well, if, I could find, if I could find that right person, get married, then I would find satisfaction. And then once you get married, here's what happens. Okay, we get married, we love each other, we're taking care of one another, but man, there just seems to be something missing. So if we just had kids, okay, then we would be satisfied. And then you get kids and they're in diapers and you're just like, oh my gosh, I wish my kids were out of diapers because once my kids are out of diapers, things are going to go so much better. We're going to be more satisfied when our kids are out of diapers, right? And then your kids get out of diapers, you start them in school, and then you're just like, wow, it seems like I'm taking my kids all over the place. I really wish they would get their driver's license. My life is going to be so much complete, more complete and satisfied once they get their driver's license. Well, then they get their driver's license, and then it's like, oh, wow, they're always gone and never see them. And then they, they go off to college, and you're just like, Whew. now we got them out of the house. Finally, we got the kids out of the house. And then you're, you're struggling with the empty nester syndrome, and you're just like, what are we going to do now? And then all of a sudden, your kids get out of college, and they move back home, <laughs> Right? They boomerang. They just come right back. And then, and then you start the process all over. Anyway, isn't it interesting that it seems like whenever we take that next hurdle, whenever we take that next step, however we progress in our lives, it always seems like there's something else that we are pursuing or looking at to bring satisfaction. Isn't it interesting that so many people think um, that more will make them happy? More things will satisfy us. There's got to be something out there that I'm missing that would really just satisfy my heart's desire. And so we chase after those. We, 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 we run after those things. We pursue those things with everything that we have, okay, looking for satisfaction. Yet, here's the thing. So many are... So many people, I believe, are, are really pursuing things of this world, things of this planet that really hold no meaning when they really should be pursuing the things of God, which brings the ultimate satisfaction. So if you find yourself, okay, life is really going great, life is just fantastic for you, and, and you want to be more dissatisfied in your life than you are right now, okay? I'm going to give you some really bad advice right now, okay? This is all really great, bad advice. So I would encourage you to get a pencil out, take down some uh, notes, because this is good stuff. This will change your life from maybe something that's going pretty well to something that's, you know, you know, you can be dissatisfied with everything that's going on around you, all right? So here it is. Bad advice number one. Bad advice number one, if you want to be dissatisfied, focus on being ungrateful. Just focus on being ungrateful. Uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul, said this to the, the church in Thessalonica, the, Thessalon the, Thessalonians, the Thessalonians, okay? First Thessalonians chapter 5, starting in verse 16, it sa he says this, <laughs> rejoice always, pray continuously, and then he has the gall to say this, give thanks in 
all circumstances for, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I mean, that's got to be, so, that is just so stupid, right? I mean, that's got to be the, the dumbest. How, how am I supposed to be grateful or give thanks to God in all circumstances? Because I don't know, if you look at my life, I look at other people's lives, Man, there's a lot of things that I would sit here and go, I, I, I just rather gripe in all circumstances. That's much easier. So that, that's, my bad, that's my best bad advice. Just complain in all circumstances. Find fault in everything, okay? Everywhere you go, everyone you meet, just find fault in it the best you can. Foster a genuine spirit of ingratitude. You know, that, that, just let it go deep into your soul, okay? What do you want to do? is you want to resent God's goodness in your life and in everyone else's life. When you see God working in someone else's life, just be resentful about that. Whenever someone is blessed, you just want to go, um, who do they think they are? Uh, Why do they deserve that? Wow, they think they're a good enough person to to deserve that. So, you know, jealousy is a really good thing to have if you want to be discontent. So tell yourself, you're well better off than they are, and, and you deserve more. Be jealous, okay? Be critical of them. Be envious of the other person. That, that will really help to be ungrateful uh, in, in life, okay? So if they get a raise, just talk them down. You should have got that raise in the first place. If they're married, right, or if they get married, just trash talk their marriage. Just, just wow, downplay everything that they're doing. Um, that will make you feel better about yourself anyway, If they get nicer clothes, um, get more attention, whatever, just tear them down. Resent God's goodness in other people's lives as much as you can. Now, don't miss this. Ignore his goodness in your own life as well. Don't be grateful for what you have. Don't be thankful for your health, your friends, uh, the blessings that you have. Um, You've got plenty to eat. You've got a place to stay. You've got transportation on and on and on, but just just be ungrateful, okay? So foster a spirit of ungratefulness. Now, if you really want to be dissatisfied, here's my second point. My second point, number two in bad advice is this. Compare what you have to what other people have. In other words, <laughs> this, is good. this is good. You should write this down, okay? This is good advice. If you kind of like your house, you're like, wow, my house isn't too bad. Turn on HDTV, okay? Watch it. I mean, this works every time. And all of a sudden, you're going to hate your pathetic little shack that you're living in right now. You're going to be completely dissatisfied. You just watch HGTV and you're going to be like, this is my crummy little house. Why did God give me this thing? I, 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 should, I deserve so much better, okay? So just, just, you know, look at your shack that you're living in right now and go, wow, mine is such a crummy place to live. So compare salaries. That's a good one. Compare marriages. Compare washers and dryers, right? Someone else has that, that, that front loader and you've got the top loader and it's such a pain to get stuff in from this and, the, and just compare those kind of things. You're really going to find dissatisfaction with the stuff that you have when you just start comparing to other people's things, okay? So just start doing that. Um, guys, I don't know, salary, shoes, Look at that guy's hair. He actually has some. I can't even grow it on my, whatever the case may be, okay? Oh, and this is, okay. If you didn't do the HDTV thing, you got to write this one down. Social media comparisons, okay? You look at how many likes somebody else gets, especially on their sunset photos. Dude, I put up a sunset photo. Nobody liked it. They put up a sunset photo. Look just like mine. They got all the likes, right? You put a Bible verse out there. Nobody likes it. Whatever the case may be, they've got more followers. So really, compare yourself to other people, especially on social media. Because if you're satisfied in life and you want to be dissatisfied, that's one of the best ways to do it, okay? So just compare yourself with other people, especially if they're getting great blessings from God and you feel like you're getting none, okay? So to be totally dissatisfied, number one, number one, focus on being ungrateful. And number two, compare yourself with others, especially the stuff that they have that's that's more than yours. Number three, bad advice. You're going to love this one. Pursue temporary possessions over eternal treasures. Oh, this is great. 
pursue temporary possessions over eternal um, treasures that God wants us to, to focus on. So don't do that, okay? We all know that life we have is the only life that we have. And so what we want to do is get the most out of it. So it's really, really important that you focus in on what you drive, okay? You got to have the best car or the clothes that you wear. Make sure that you only wear the nicest things. Life is all about things, 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 okay? You got to think about those things. Think about the here and now. Think about what's on this earth and everything that you can accumulate now. And with that is think less of other people, right? Don't, don't, don't care about other people. Think about yourself. Think about your own needs. Think about your own desires And don't think about the eternal things that God wants us to focus in on. Because it's the temporal things. It's the here and now. And you deserve these things, right? So don't care about eternity, eternal things, blah, 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 blah. It's all about right now. So to do that, to think about everything that's here on this earth, you got to think short term. You got to think in the moment. You got to tell yourself again and again, more is better. A lot more is even better. Bigger is better. Now is better. Live for the now. And and nothing in moderation, my friend. Nothing in moderation. So that's bad advice. Pursue temporal things uh, that are here on this earth and just ignore the the eternal treasures that God has for us. Just put those off to the side. And my last piece of bad advice is this. Develop an attitude of entitlement. (laughs) Develop an attitude of entitlement. Develop an an attitude um, of entitlement. And and here's why. Here's why. In Romans chapter 6, there is a startling verse there. It says this. Romans chapter 6, starting in verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin, what what is a wage, number one? Something you go out and earn, right? So you have earned this. And the Bible says, for the wages, for our sin is death. So are you kidding me? I mean, in other words, Paul's saying, we're getting what we deserve out of the sin that we've created in this life, which is death. So Paul's off his ever-loving rocker, because he's saying that you and I deserve death. Well, that's just dumb. That's just dumb. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. We don't, we don't deserve death. I mean, look at our life. I haven't done anything quite that bad. I mean, when I compare my life with, you know, Matt Parker, who's in here videoing right now, when I compare my life to his, dude, I am, I'm a good person. I, so I, it's so much better, whatever. All right. So <clears throat> that's just, I think that's just a scare tactic that we deserve death. That's just a scare tactic by the church to kind of correct our, our lives here. So, I mean, look at my life. I, I deserve these things, okay? The things that I'm pursuing, I, I, I just deserve. I've had a rough life, so I deserve it. I've worked hard. I, I've got this coming to me right now because I've gone out and I've worked hard for it. I don't deserve death. I deserve more. I deserve those new shoes, that new car. I deserve that new boat. I deserve that gallon of chunky monkey ice cream that I could sit down and devour the whole thing. Can I get an amen on that, please? All right, you get it. I deserve it. You deserve it. I deserve my retirement. It's mine, 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 mine. I deserve it, okay? I deserve it. So foster, if you really want to be dissatisfied in life, just foster this entitlement mindset. Okay, you deserve what you get. Okay, I got I got to press pause on the whole bad advice thing because I don't know how many people checked in while I was going through that, and they're sitting here going, "Wow, this church, that pastor, he's off his rocker." Okay, so, um, but wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you agree that a lot of times what so many people are actually end up doing is that we compare all day long with what we have okay, or or we focus on what we don't have and we focus on the things that we don't have and we can get really dissatisfied 
in life. Let's just be honest, okay? So many times we can be incredibly ungrateful. We, we just can. Most people in, in our culture, especially again, if you're watching here in the United States, we, we've, we're really blessed in our part of the world. We just are, okay? Um, the way that things lay out in terms of blessings, most people around the world, I guarantee you, most people around the world look at our lives, okay? I'm going to guess if you're watching online here in the United States, you would have to understand that most people watching around the world look at us and go, wow, you guys are incredibly blessed. Are you kidding me? You have so much. You guys have so much. And yet sometimes the more we have, hear me on this, lean in. A lot of times the more that we have, the more ungrateful we become. Let's unpack that a little bit, okay? Um, because what I want to do is I want to I zero in on one big thought today. Just one thought. I want you to walk away with this one thought to help us really focus on what truly does matter, okay? How do we, as, as Paul said earlier on, how do we give thanks in all circumstances? I had someone tell me this many years ago, and, and I, I truly believe that there's a lot of truth in this. How we live, okay, how we live in our da daily lives, not how we talk in our daily lives, but how we live reveals what we believe. I like that. How we live reveals what we believe. In other words, don't give me lip service about what you believe. Don't just tell me what you believe. I want to see a difference in your life. I want to see the actions being lived out showing this is what you really believe. Because how we live truly does tell other people what we believe. This wouldn't necessarily be true for everybody, but I'm going to guess culturally, in the American culture, I think that many of you would agree that most of us are actually saying, if we look at how the American culture is living right now, I'm going to say a very bold statement. I'm going to say a very bold statement about our American culture. And I think sometimes it does infiltrate the church, okay? What Christ offers in the minds of many people is not as good as what the world offers. That what Jesus offers, by the way that we live, not necessarily by our words, but the way that we are living demonstrates that we believe that the world offers far more than what Jesus Christ offers. It is, Jesus doesn't offer as much as the world does. So we can use our mouth to say, "Woo, Jesus Christ matters. He is everything to me. Yet the way that we live many times is just the opposite. It's more like, <clears throat> I'll find satisfaction if I have that new car, or if I have that new toy. I'll find more satisfaction in life if I had that house or, or if I lived in that area or if I knew that person or were friends with that person or had all these Instagram people following me or, <coughs> excuse me, or if my retirement was right where I needed it to be, then I would be satisfied. And I'm telling you something, if that is you today, if, if pursuing all those things is what's truly going to bring you satisfaction, may I suggest that you're following some bad advice. Think about this for just a second. Think about this for just a second. I believe this. Gratitude is turns what I have into enough. When you become grateful for what God has given you, when you understand that God has blessed us beyond belief, your gratitude towards God, your gratitude for Jesus, your gratitude towards the blessings that he has given us turns into enough. You know it's true. You know it's true. You'd have to agree with me on this. It's not happy people who are grateful. It's grateful people who are happy. Let that sink in for just a second, you, because you know that's true, man. 
it's not happy people who are grateful. It's grateful people who are happy. I'm going I'm to dig into a couple of verses. This is what, this is what I want to close with today. I want to dig into a couple of verses that are phenomenal. I love the book of Philippians. And these are some of my favorite chapter or, or verses, excuse me, in Philippians. In Philippians chapter 3, starting at verse 7, it says this. Now, now Paul, it's again, it's Paul talking. And he's talking to the Philippian church and he says this. But whatever was gained or were gained to me, I now consider lost for the sake of Christ. Now, if you look at Paul's life, you know anything about Paul, the apostle Paul, that dude had an impressive uh, list of titles, of accomplishments, um, the things that he had done, the things that he had learned, the experiences that he had had. I'm telling you, Paul was a truly accomplished person. And yet he's, he says this. He says, when I consider all the wins, when I consider my resume, when I consider um, everything that I have experienced, when I look at all my educational background, my experiences, when I look at the abilities and the giftedness and the talents and all the stuff that I have, I consider it loss. I consider it loss compared to the gain of knowing who Jesus Christ is. Whatever this world has given me, okay, um, whether it's social ranking, um, whatever I thought brought satisfaction or comfort or style or prestige, hanging out with the right, with the right people at the right parties, all those, whatever the world gains me, I now consider lost for the cause of Christ. Whatever I thought was so daggum important as my titles and my accomplishments, I consider that rubbish to what Christ has given me. Watch this, verse eight. What is more? I consider everything loss because of what? Because of the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord, my Savior, for whose sake I've lost all things, all things. Those are important words right there at the end. I have lost all those things. They are nothing compared to the surpassing knowledge of not just knowing about Jesus, <laughs> but knowing Jesus. I want you to look at the second part of verse 8. I consider all that stuff, the prestige, the wins, the, the important stuff that I thought my status was bringing, my accomplishments, I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. He says, I consider all these things lost for the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Listen, it's not about <clears throat> knowing Jesus. It's not about knowing about Jesus. Let me say it that way, if I can get this out right. It's not about knowing who Jesus is. It's about knowing intimately the relationship that you can have with Jesus to connect with him. His spirit leads you. His word guides you. His presence empowers you. You know what? You're never having to dig through life or go through life on your own. You wake up and you're not living for temporal things anymore. You're living for the things of God, which are eternal. And this is what happens. When you have this intimate knowledge of who Jesus Christ, suddenly you stop looking at yourself and what's going to satisfy you. And you start looking at other people and saying, wow, these people matter. People matter to God. So they matter to me. And you look at what you have. You look at all your accomplishments. You look at all the stuff that God has blessed you with. And all of a sudden you turn that around and go, now how can I use those, all these things, to be a blessing to someone else, to make a difference in this world. You look at the influence that God has given you. Every one of you, every one of you watching right now has an area of influence with people. And so you begin to think about your area of influence of people and how you can influence others with this intimate knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. You you impart that to other people. My only reasonable response, when you understand the intimate nature of your relationship with Jesus, your only reasonable response when you truly know Jesus is to say, 
I count all this other stuff as garbage, as loss, compared to now my understanding of my relationship with Jesus Christ. This is huge. Your, mind sh- your mindset just shifts differently from the things of this world that you think were going to satisfy you for so long to the things of the eternal treasures that God wants to have and bring into your life. They switch from worldly things to kingdom things. And suddenly, we're not distracted by the simple sparkly things and items of this life. No, we're distracted by the love, the grace, the mercy, the forgiveness, the salvation, the, the, the blessings of God by knowing Jesus Christ. There's kind of an interesting word in here, okay? Um, when, he, when, when Paul says, I consider them garbage, our translators sometimes get a little too politically correct, okay? Because they don't want to offend somebody by giving the actual meaning of the word. But the word that is used for garbage um, is the word skabula, Skabula. Matt, let me hear you say skabula. 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 It's a weird word. But you know what that word means, Matt? Human waste. It means caca. Okay? It means poop. It means crap. Okay? As a matter of fact, it's probably a little bit even more derogatory in our our English language than um, I'm going to take and say on, on video today. But that's what it means. He says this, he says this, I consider all those things in my life, all those things that I thought were so important in my life, I consider them skabula compared to the understanding of knowing the satisfaction found in Jesus Christ. I consider them caca, I consider them poop, I consider them crap compared to the understanding of the intimate knowledge of knowing Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Some of you are just like, I can't believe that Tim got Matt to say skabula and I repeated it three times myself. I get it. It's okay. It has all the, it has all the feelings of a swear word without all the guilt. Okay, so here's the thing. For years... For years, I used to teach this. For years, I used to say, Christ is enough. How many of you, how many of you watching, how many of you would say, I get it, Tim. I've lived this life. I've transitioned from trying to find satisfaction in this world to finding all the satisfaction that I need through Jesus Christ. How many of you would say, Christ is enough? Can I tell you something? I think my position for so long was to teach that. And it was an incorrect position because I'm telling you, Christ isn't just enough. Christ is way more than enough. Christ isn't just enough. He's way more than enough. Let me just, let me just ask a pointed question. What if every material thing that you have right now What if everything, your couch, your car, your furniture, your clothes, everything except for the clothes on your back just was gone? I mean, for whatever reason, it just, you, you, you know, you opened your eyes and everything that you thought was important, everything that you had here was just gone. Everything on this earth vanished. Let me follow that question up with this. Would Jesus be enough? Would Jesus be more than enough? Way more than enough. It's a question I think you have to ponder. Is Jesus really the Lord of your life? Is he really the king of your life? Is he really the salvation? Is he really the satisfaction of your life? Because I believe this. I believe that Jesus is way more than enough. He is so much more than what this planet, what this earth, what this world can provide. 
I guarantee you he's way more than enough because he is everything. He is eternal. He is real. He is truth. He is the living water. He is the rock. He is the alpha. He is the omega. He is the first, the last, the beginning, the end. He is our redeemer. He is our righteousness. He is our Lord. He is our savior. He is the lion. He's the lamb. He's the provider. He's the protection. He is our power. He is the ultimate, uh, who provides the ultimate provision for our lives. He is the mighty one. He is at the right hand of God and he's mediating for you and me with God. The way we live often communicates what we believe about Christ. And he is not just enough. He is more than enough. And so I believe this, that we need to communicate that. We need to communicate it not with our our words, but our lives. And the problem is that many times, and, I, and not everybody, some of you are just so, just amazing followers of Jesus Christ and the world doesn't have you trapped, but I'm telling you, the way that many people live communicates that we believe that Christ is not enough. Because we tend to live one way, maybe talk another, and the way that we live many times, we're just saying, no. I want more of the world. That's what really satisfies me, not who Jesus Christ is. The only thing that brings true eternal satisfaction is more of Jesus, not more of this world. Hear me on this. The only thing that brings true eternal satisfaction into our lives is more of Jesus. It's more of Jesus. Guys, it's more of Jesus. I pray that some of you, I pray that some of you, like the Apostle Paul had, will have a spiritual breakthrough. That as you look at your lives and and try to try to figure out what really does bring satisfaction to my life, if it hasn't been Jesus, if it hasn't been more of Jesus in your life and more of things of this world, today I pray that you have a breakthrough. That you consider all this other stuff, just skabula compared to the intimate knowledge of knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that Jesus is enough. He is way more than enough. And so I'm going to talk with you guys for just a second, and this is how I want to close this out today. I want to talk with some of you today that maybe deep down inside, <laughs> You would say, I've been that dissatisfied person, that I've bought the lie, that I've been living bad advice. I know that some of you out there may look at your life right now and go, wow, I, I've, I've truly messed this up. <laughs> I, I've, I've pursued other things. I've chased other things, looking for satisfaction in all the wrong places. And, and I've fallen short again and again and again. And when you look at how you're living, so many people today, I believe, are, are looking for something to fill an emptiness and, and, and a satisfaction. And I know this may sound cliche, okay? I know this may sound cliche, but I guarantee you it's the exact right words. And it's this. Many of you are looking for satisfaction in this world. Some of you are chasing something to fill that void in your life. And here's the deal. There is a Christ-shaped void in all of our lives. Okay, I love that imagery, that there's something missing inside of all of us, and it's a void that only can be filled and satisfied through Jesus Christ. You can continue to try to fill that void, and some of you will. Some of you will try to con- to fill that void that is missing in our, in our lives with so many different things, whether it's the parties, the experiences, the vacations, the sex, the money, the drugs, the alcohol, whatever. You think that your, you know, your retirement, your bank account is going to fill this void. And at the end of the day, can I challenge you that you will still be dissatisfied. Why? Because the things of this world never satisfy You have a Christ-shaped void in your soul. And the only way to fill that is to allow him in. You were created to know him eternally. And when you know him eternally, it transforms your life now for eternity. The reality is, 
is you just come to him exactly where you are. You say to him, listen, I've been a long ways from you. I've chased a lot of different things. You speak to Jesus like you're speaking to a friend and you just say, look, I, I need your love. I need your grace. I need your forgiveness. I need your satisfaction. I, I, I need you in my life. And here's what I know. That when you turn to Christ, no matter how far you think you have drifted from him, no, fa- no matter how far you think you've gotten away from Christ, because of God's love, he loves you so much that he sent Jesus Christ to be with us, to be the sacrifice that we needed, to, to take on our penalty. Remember I said earlier on that we deserve death? We did. Jesus loved us so much, he took on that penalty of death. He fills that void. He becomes that satisfaction. So for those of us who would say yes today, man, I've got an emptiness inside of me. I need to turn my life over to Jesus. I need to turn away from the things that I've been pursuing, which is the sin of this world. I need to ask Jesus to fill that void in my life and to make him Lord. Can I just say today by faith, you can receive his grace, his mercy, his love, his forgiveness, his satisfaction. You can receive his power, his presence, his peace, his provision that satisfies everything. So if that is you today, just simply say this. Say yes. What do you have to lose? Say yes. Say yes, I surrender to you. And here's what I'd like to do. If you would allow me, (laughs) for those of you who said, that's me, I, I I need Jesus. Would you allow me to pray with you and for you today as we close this out? God, we thank you that you have brought satisfaction to our lives. We thank you that even in a world that is so distracting, that is so enticing, that draws us um, to all these different things that literally pull us away from you, Lord, that you came and said, I will meet you wherever you're at and I will fill the void of emptiness, of dissatisfaction. I will, I will come into your life and I will not only be the satisfaction that you need, but I will I will demonstrate my love and grace and mercy and forgiveness. All you have to simply do is just say yes to me, to make me the Lord of your life, to be the Savior of your life. And so for those people out there who are praying that right now, Lord, I pray that your peace, your power, your provision, I I pray that if there's been something that's been keeping people from seeing you, that that veil is ripped away and they see you now for who you are as the most perfect, satisfying sacrifice that was ever made on on this planet to draw us closer to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. It's in his name we pray. Without hope, your love made a way to let mercy come in when dead was arrested by life. Be. Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. My orphan heart. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance When there was a rest in my life Oh, your grace so free washes over me You have made Really?
release from my chains I'm a prince but no more My shame was a ransom He painfully born He cancelled my death And he called me his friend When death was arrested in my life Darkness rejoices to heaven at loss. But then G